the first thing comes off of that before it ever touches the general fund, missions comes off first. It's on the counting sheet. It's taken off first on the counting sheet. They count it, take it off, set it aside. Am I right? Didn't change the form, right? Still there. They, yeah, you see, that's the way it is. It's still there. We take the missions off first. That's a principle. We put the missionaries first. And then we pay our bills after that. You know what happens? When you pay God's work first, put God first, he takes care of all your needs later. How do you think this church ever got to be debt free? Because we put God first and God took care of this, us. I'm so thankful that we know that lesson in this church. And I don't, we don't even have to argue about it. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money's not evil. If I had a hill like that, I'd dig it up and take all the money out of it. And of course, you know, I'd tie it on it. Sure, but anyway, it's, it'd be a great way to say, this and this is great, we just dig up money. We need to plant the whole front yard in this. The money tree. Um, <laughs> I just want to talk about this for a minute. 1 Corinthians, it's 1 Timothy 6. It says, those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith and the greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Some people have no time for God. They got no time. They're busy earning or spending money. And like I said before, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. That's one reason I don't like debt. You think it's, it's not funny. I don't like debt because I want to be able to be free to do ministry. We retire, Retiring debt of a church is a good thing to do. We're building a solar system out here. We have, I hate, well, I hate this debt. I love the solar system. It's going to be great. It's going to produce six, more than six million watts. Uh, 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 per month. It, uh, total for the years, like over 50, I don't know, it's over 50, between 50, 60 million watts of power this thing's going to generate. We have to invest money into that in order to attain the benefit. So it is an investment to, to protect us from the future of cost going up. So that's why we're doing it. It would be great to retire that debt, wouldn't it? It would be really great, Mark, to retire that debt. It's called, it's called the ushers. <laughs> yeah, it's called the ushers. I had one lady in the church I was in, she said, they passed the plates, she, they counted up, she said, we didn't get enough. <laughs> she just told them, pastors got out of this. We just said, we have no part in this. She just said, pass it again. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> she knew how to do it. The love of money is absolutely a problem, though. It is a serious problem. You know what's your best investment? In people for whom Christ died. Best thing to invest your money in is people for whom Jesus died. People you're going to get to see again in heaven. It's in verse 9. It says, And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, or the money fails, you may, they may receive you into an everlasting home. If you read it wrong, that sounds like what it's saying is you're, you are uh, making friends with money so that you can get into heaven. It's not what it means. It means you use money to reach people for Christ so that when you get to heaven, they'll be there to greet you. You invest in winning people to Jesus so that they'll be in heaven. And when it comes your time to die, They'll be there to cheer you on and greet you and thank you for your gift. You follow? It's not a matter of you cannot pay anything to get anybody to heaven. Jesus paid it all. His life, his blood for you and for me. So they're going to be in heaven to greet us. I think it's a wonderful thing to know. We should be using money to influence people for Jesus Christ. One way to do it, give money to support the purposes of witnessing or making disciples or providing a caring ministry for people, help people. Or fellowship with one another. You know I love fellowship. And worship. All those things are important things that we need to do. And we support it. The reason isn't just to have fun. 
I have great joy, which is deep abiding joy inside, but it's when I'm with you. And when I see a new person come, and we can help that person come to Jesus and have a relationship, we need to be a witness for Jesus, amen? That's what we need to be about doing, tell, that's, tell the story. So we need to use money that way. So how we manage God's money, it's God's money, reveals if He can trust us with true riches. That's why Jesus said He was faithful in what is least, is faithful also in much. He who is in just, unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. If you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches? You want the true riches? You want the true riches? If you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Everything you and I have belongs to God. Amen? It's the truth. We need to be faithful what He has entrusted to us. He is watching to see what do you do with your life, your health. We pray for health. If you say, Lord, help me to be strong so I can be a witness. <laughs> Give me a good voice so I can be a witness. Help me, to, help me to be strong so I can help around the church or I can help somebody who needs help. That's a good thing to pray for because you're praying so God can make you able to help someone else. Right? Good thing. God will help you with that. But you say, God, make me strong and healthy so I can go out and party on the weekend. That's not honoring God in your life. And I know you're here because I'm speaking to the choir. You're the people who are here because you're honoring God today. That's why you're here. There is such a thing as worldly wealth. That's money God gives to all of us. All the wealth in the world belongs to God. That's why I can say, say that. He owns all the diamonds, all the gold, all the oil wells. He owns all the cattle on all the hills, and he owns the hills. And by the way, it's all about, it's all about tithe and trusting God. Look at Malachi 3.10. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. God said it. 